This next guy, give this guy a huge round of applause. Already? Very happy to have this next guy here. Not when I bring him to the stage. <laughs> Very happy to have this guy here. He does our show often and shows all over Brooklyn. He's very hilarious. You may have seen him on television. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Nick Turner. Keep it going for Greg Johnson, everybody. Oh my God. Nothing but the best for that guy. He is pulling it off, almost. That hat look, almost. <laughs> pulling it off. That is uh, maybe the best uh, credit I have <laughs> that I play shows all over Brooklyn. <laughs> You're like, oh, this guy, he won't, he's the best. <laughs> he won't play no place that is not Brooklyn exactly. <laughs> I keep asking him to do shows in Australia, but he won't do it. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I've played shows from Green Point to Coney Island. <laughs> Luckily, there was some TV in there. Um, I, um, my room, I was talking to my roommate, and then my roommate was like, hey, bro. Uh, oh, this is, he's gross. But, uh, he was like, hey, bro, you know that woman I've been banging? for the past week, yeah, a week, oh, pretty good. Um, and, uh, but that's a, that's a quote from him, that's not me. And I said to him, I said, uh, yeah, I know that girl you've been putting it to. I'm, we're, we're the same. Uh, I am registered. But he, he went on to be like, he was like, hey, you know that girl I've been punching downstairs? And then I was like, yeah, I know that girl you've been punching a hole in. And then that went on for over an hour and a half. Um, until he had to go to work. So I never did find out what he wanted. Probably he's in love or something. He's a good guy. I went to the doctor uh, recently for the first time in a long time uh, because Obama made me. I was fine with just letting that thing grow. And then Obama made it illegal to be gross. So I went to the doctor and um, I got a physical and then they took my blood test and then uh, I left and then they made me come back in for the blood test results, which means I'm dying. Uh, I thought, uh, but he sat me down and he explained to me this. He said, I looked at your blood test results and it has come to my attention that you are generally healthy, but you are overweight. And I went, what? <laughs> oh my God. Well, thank God we took that test. Okay, we've identified it and now we can move on. And then he said to me, literally, he said to me that I should stop eating so many fatty or fried foods. Uh, little rats! It's too much at once! And then he said to me I should eat more fruits and vegetables. I said, I gotta stop you there. I gotta go get a pen. <laughs> so you're totally nailing it on the head what the problem is. I said, I don't know. Uh, and I'm, I'm gonna need to write this down so I remember uh, what to order when I go straight to KFC. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, I, I have had, I have been without health insurance for a very long time. And if you're like me, which you're here, um, I, I think you, you can get behind this. Uh, they don't treat you that well when you don't have insurance. And they really want to find out immediately. You could go to the emergency room with your leg in your hand. And they'd be like, uh, what's your insurance? And I'm like, well, first off, my name is Nick. And then they just slap me like, we don't give a shit what your name is. Can you pay for this? No? Well then, jump in that pile of people about to die. Get out of here! 
Um, I went recently for a very sexy thumb infection. And I went, we're moving on. And uh, I went and they sat, I said, you know, no insurance. And they sat me in a room for five hours before the doctor came to see me. And while I was in there, uh, this guy just pops his head in and he's like, hey, while you wait, would you like an AIDS test? <laughs> that was a big twist. Uh, who sent you? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would like that. I operate uh, under the principle of like, you know, if somebody offers you a piece of gum, fucking take it. You might have some stank breath. Uh, so somebody offers me an AIDS test, so I'm like, maybe they know something I don't. I'll take it. Also, I've never had one. And um, I went, uh, so he swabs my mouth, and then he leaves, and then 10 minutes later, he returns, which I personally don't feel is long enough for proper AIDS results. <laughs> that seemed real short. Let me take a lap around the hospital, make me think he did something. And then he comes back in, and he delivers my AIDS results like this. He goes, uh, hey! <laughs> you good? <laughs> and then he left. Mm, I don't know what that meant. To this day, I don't really know if I have AIDS or not. I prefer my AIDS results a little less ambiguous. Maybe say my name. Maybe say the words, you don't have AIDS. These all are preferable. Also, I don't know if that guy worked there. <laughs> he didn't have any scrubs on or anything. He was just a guy in a t-shirt walking around the hospital swabbing mouths. He could have just given me AIDS for all I know. He was like, ah, you're good. You got AIDS. Oh, you didn't want AIDS. Okay, yeah. You should have said something earlier because you have AIDS now. Thanks to me, Johnny Appalachian. My superhero. Um, <laughs> you know that uh, ad on the subway? Uh, I'm, I don't want to assume too much about you, but you look like subway people. I uh, there's an ad on the subway that like safety ad that says, says like 141 people got hit by trains last year, but only 55 of them survived. You've seen it. I don't need to ask. Ah, uh, that is haunting. But my question is, 55 survived, only 55 survived getting hit by a fucking train? Where are these people? That seems real high. I think about getting hit by a train and I think it's probably not 55 that were like, woof. <laughs> Off to take care of my kids for the rest of my life. Real high. Well, not one of them has been on a talk show. I don't buy it. There's not one ad on television that's like, what do these 55 men have in common? They all fought a fucking train and lived. And they all wear Wrangler jeans by Wrangler jeans. I'm not fucking buying it. If any one of you knows one of these people, feel free to let me know. They're hiding. I went to Korea recently, and then even more recently, I came back. Which is how you know which Korea I went to. One of them's a lot cooler than the other one. Um, I went to Seoul, South Korea, and it's roughly the same size as New York, so I figured I knew what I was getting into, mostly smashing cabs and telling them I'm walking. Um, and it's a melting pot. There's one of everybody here, and I figured Seoul's the same amount of people, probably another melting pot. And uh, I was very wrong. In Seoul, you can find Koreans. And that's it. Uh, there are Koreans, and no, if you see another white person, you like freak, you wave at them like you're both bus drivers. Uh, yeah. uh, 
And then they're all, the other guy's always like, what are you doing here? I'm the white guy in this neighborhood. <laughs> I got no thing. Um, but it's just a lot of Koreans, and it's a lot of Korean food. 19 out of 20 restaurants are Korean. Which, it's fine, you can do whatever you want to do with your own city. Um, but then the 20th restaurant, you'd be like, oh, thank God. You, it'll be like an Italian restaurant. You know, then you, you know, in your mind, you're like, thank God, you know, some American food. And, and then, I wish you would get jokes earlier, because I really got to wait a while. Uh, uh, there you go. <laughs> but then you go into the Italian restaurant, and then you're like, oh, there's something weird about this. You look at the menu, and you're like, there are a lot of dishes with fish eyes in them on this Italian menu. And then the waiter comes out, and he's like, gotcha, there's nothing here. It's all Korean food. We lied. We were not doing well. Got a lot of fish eyes back there. You'd be surprised how gross we find them. <laughs> then I got back to New York. Um, at four o'clock in the morning when I came back from my uh, flight and at four o'clock in the morning, even at four o'clock in the morning they're still doing that whole customs bullshit <laughs> where you have to you have to prove you didn't lose your passport on the plane. You know I had it. You know I had it earlier. And then they ask you question after question after question until you just finally admit to murdering that guy. I don't care. Too many questions. I want to see my family. <laughs> So, like the quick, and then they get a rel they get, they get, they are relevant, and they get less relevant, or they get less relevant. Like, uh, you know, like what were you doing there? How long were you there? And then he asked me, what do you do for a living? And I said, I'm a comedian. And then he said, Oh, comedian, huh? <laughs> well, I guess I don't need to ask you my next question, which is, do you have ten thousand dollars in cash on you? <laughs> And I didn't like it then, and I don't like it now. <laughs> so I said, I'm sorry that I'm not making that sweet checking passports at 4 a.m. money <laughs> that you're rolling in. Money bags. And I spent two hours in jail, and it was worth it. <laughs> that was the first time I'd ever been to jail for, not for weed. Uh, so it was a different side of the coin. Uh, still sucked. Anyway, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm just never excited when like I'm hanging out with a friend and then their significant other shows up. It's never better. I'm never having a good time with my friend and then oh, great, cool. The more the merrier. You found out. Okay, cool. Ah, uh, and then you turn to your friend and you're like, I wonder what. I was wondering what it would be like if all of your opinions changed suddenly. <laughs> so, yes. Oh, I love this new dynamic. Um, you ever hang out with a couple and it's just the two of them and you, and, uh, and then they start fighting right in front of you. Like you're not there, but you are there, and you're in a car. And there's nothing you can do except open the door and roll out. <laughs> But that's the old me. The new me, I don't take that shit. If I'm hanging out with a couple now, and they start fighting in front of me, I just pick a side and jump in. <laughs> I was like, now's the best time to do this. You don't fucking listen, Karen. <laughs> Always said it, high five. Yeah, same team. You should have waited. It is two against one. <laughs> the best part about that strategy is that they never invite you over again. It's great. <laughs> I'm using the same kind of logic to combat one of America's greatest scourges. Uh, of course, I'm talking about cat calling. It's bad. I don't want to fucking hear it. Men. Oh. You pigs. You don't get a vote. <laughs> if you don't know what cat calling culture is, that's weird. And it's this. Every time a woman leaves her house, men yell at her until she gets back to her house. That's life, and it's no life. And so I'm the only one out there fucking doing something about it. And this is real, this is true life, this is something I'm, yeah, you take that, camera number two. This is what I do. Every time I'm in the streets, 
which is frequently, when I see when I see a man, you shut up. I see a man in the street, uh, cat calling a woman. I immediately start catcalling that man. <laughs> He'll be in the streets a lot like my roommate. <laughs> if you see someone in the streets who's moving their shoulders to that degree, you gotta watch that guy. He's up to no good. Oh yeah, why do you need so much attention? Hey, hey. Oh. Hey, man. Hey, mama. Hey, what kind of underwear are you wearing? Uh, something gross. They're very inquisitive, these people. Then I'll, I hear that. It's a bat signal for me. And I come out, I come running. I come out from around the corner and I'll be like, I'll tell you what underwear I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm wearing boxers and briefs. Because neither one of them are in good enough shape to do the job alone. That's just for you and me. Now I just got one request. Show me that fucking dick. Come on, motherfucker, give it to me. Don't act like I brought this up. You didn't want me to come over here, why'd you wear that shirt with your stomach all hanging out? You know that drives me crazy. And the best part about that is that nine out of 10 times, I have sex with that guy. Yeah, we did it. Let's do it, everyone. Good night, I love you. Nick Turner, everybody, give him a big round of applause. Thank you very much for coming. Good night, I love you, I mean it, Hank. <laughs>